Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the NASL Season 2 Qualifier. Now, you may recognize this map because this is the first map that's being used in every single uh, round of 128 match. And you may be like, hey, Axel, I thought the round of 128 matches were yesterday. Well, they were. A lot were yesterday, but there were some issues with Battle.net. A lot of people were unable to log on, so a lot of the round of 128 games that were supposed to be played yesterday are going to be played today. So that's why we're on this map today. And it looks like there's a pause in the action. One of the players is changing some hotkeys, so we'll have a little bit of time to talk. But yeah, as I was saying, a lot of problems happened yesterday with Battle.net. They were doing server maintenance, so a lot of people weren't able to log in. So a lot of round of 128 games will be played today. And that's what we have here. We have a best of three between in the top right, in the green, spawning as a Terran is VT Avello in the bottom left, his opponent it is the Blue Protoss by the name of The Unknown. Now, he is not unknown. He is actually OGS Inca, the Korean Protoss player. So this will be OGS Inca versus VT Avillo. If people start joining up and asking in the chat who the heck is The Unknown, go ahead and tell them that it is OGS Inca because, well, you wouldn't be a liar because that is who he is, in fact. Playing from Korea, waking up early there. I think, actually, is it afternoon there? I'm not entirely sure what time it is in Korea. But either way, Inca is here to play a Villo in the round of 28 of the NASL Season 2 Qualifier. Of course, you may be asking, how do I qualify for the NASL Season 2? Well, you could have played in this tournament. Anyone can play in this tournament. It, I think it's either $5 or $10. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, one of the two. But yes, all these players paid a little bit of money to join in on this tournament. And we have a bunch of big names in it. And the top four at the end will be qualifying for NASL Season 2. So definitely a lot, a lot on the line for all of these players playing in this tournament. Of course, we saw a lot of games yesterday uh, in the round of 128. So many good games, including... I think Bubbles versus LZ Gamer was what we kicked it off, and then we ended it with Dark Cell and Lunatic. So we casted about, or I casted about 12 games yesterday, about 5 hours and 30 minutes of casting. Thank you guys so much for joining me yesterday, and I'm so happy you're with me today. And let's go ahead and talk about what's going on here. BT Villa starting with a 2 Rex play. Really interesting indeed. Walling off uh, in between the gases, so pretty weird play from a villa right now. I mean, I mean T-Rex would imply some early aggression, but then again, he's rallying into his mineral line. And this is this is really weird, I'll be honest, because if you're going to do T-Rex, I mean, why not build it down here, just so you're closer to your opponent? But looks like a villa not doing that, trying to psych out his opponent, I guess. I mean, we all... He, he would probably tell you OGS Inca is probably better than him, uh, because, I mean, that's the truth. Avilo, of course, a North American player in the Team VT, not a bad player, but definitely not on the level of OGS Inca, so definitely might have to do some sort of cheesy, crazy play if he wants to come on top, come out on top of this game. VT Villa rallying his Marines to his ramp, continuing to queue those up. Really interested to see whether he decides to do some sort of push with these two racks. Let's try the map. Unknown, of course, OGS Inca with the appropriate response, getting those two gateways out and starting to chrono boost out those stalkers. Of course, if you see the early two racks play, definitely not a bad idea because, of course, stalkers are really good against Marines, at least early on in the game. You can really do a lot of nice micro early on because, well, you can outrange the Marines, outrange the Marines, I should say. And, well, the Marines, if they do damage to your blue health, it doesn't really matter because the blue shields always come back. So, Really good play from OGS Inca thus far. It looks like Avilo actually expanding behind this 2 Rex build. Again, kind of unique play. Starting them off right there and lifting them off and landing them in a more natural place, for lack of a better term. Also putting his Vladi Po at the bottom of his ramp and continuing to produce those Marines and looking around his base for any proxy pylon shenanigans. Very proactive with that is VT Avilo. Looks like a stalker is coming forward from OGS Inca. Also queuing up two more in his gateway, which will join his friend inevitably. And now I'm interested to see whether he's going to expand behind this two gateways. And it looks like he is bringing a probe out to his natural expansion to lay down his nexus. His money is approaching 400. So pretty standard play thus far from both players. I mean, kind of identical in a way. Two barracks and two gateways into expand for both of these players. So definitely looking to get at least into the mid game at this point in the game, unless there's a, there's a cancel of a nexus or something, which is probably not going to happen. OGS Inca pausing the game. And, yeah. OGS Inca having a little bit of trouble with his hotkeys, apparently. 
something interesting to note is that he has one pause remaining, so he can only pause once more after this one. We already saw a pause from him earlier. We are live. <clears throat> My voice is kind of recovering from yesterday. All right, we're back into the game. We left off Inca putting down that natural expansion in Avilo, morphing that command center into an orbital command. Definitely going to take that natural in the near future, I would imagine. Villa putting down a bunker, always a good idea. Terran players at home, put that bunker at the top of your rent just in case. There's a lot of scary aggression that Protoss player can do early, even though you only scout oh, one or two gate. It was definitely not a bad idea to put that bunker down, because of course you can salvage it later for 75% of the minerals. Looks like it back in Avila's base, putting that factory onto that tech lab and getting a tank out immediately and also researching siege tech. So definitely going to go for some sort of marine tank composition in this game. OGS Inca poking forward with some stalkers, loses some health, not too big of a deal, only 13 health, is that, did I add that right? Yes, only 13 health lost on that stalker, Avilo gonna salvage that bunker and look to take his natural expansion in the near future here, and anyway, I want to talk about the map a little bit, tank play can be really good with all these narrow chokes and all these places where you can have high ground, you can siege up your tanks and actually do a lot of damage to the Protoss player if they're bundled up in their Protoss ball, looks like Avilo marching out with a bunch of marines and a tank, OGS Inca going to run away immediately with three stalkers and two sentries. Does not want to engage that army at this point in the game. And back in OGS Inca's base, continuing to produce two sentries and an immortal out of a robotics facility. <coughs> Excuse me, does he have an observer on the field? Let me go ahead and hit the units tab. No, no observer yet on the field. So electing to get that immortal first, just in case there's some scary push coming from VT Avello. But it looks like VT Avello is going to... La uh, what am I trying to say? Turtle up just a little bit, sieging up a couple tanks and placing down two bunkers. Inca coming forward with three stalkers, trying to get some harassment done and some scouting information. Going to get shot in the face by a siege tank and immediately retreat with those three stalkers and also bringing these two sentries back home. Inca now getting that observer, also adding two gateways, four gateways at that and a Twilight Council, so perhaps some Blink play, of course, a really good play uh, on this map. I mean, you can come to the back with Blink Stalkers, have an Observer on the high ground, and Blink into your opponent's face, and do some harassment, also good, in circumventing those Siege Tanks. You never really want to engage a Siege Tank line uh, from the Terran, because, well, you'll probably lose your army, so definitely looking to see some really good micro from OGS Inca in the future of this game. And if you're just not joining us, this is VT Avello in the top right, in the, in the bottom left. The Unknown is actually OGS Inca, so if people are just now joining in the chat, now you know, and if people join in the future in the chat, just, just let them know who's playing. Let them know it's OGS Inca, not the unknown, of course, OGS Inca, the Korean Protoss player from OGS, playing from Korea as we speak. Avilo putting down a couple supply depots, continuing to produce marines and tanks, and look at all this. Look at all these factories, ladies and gentlemen. Lots of tanks and lots of Hellions coming out from VT Avello. Also getting Blue Flame Hellion on those, uh, for those Hellions, I guess. It looks like Avello wants to march forward here. Going to do a timing push behind this Blue Flame Hellion. And I'm really interested to see how OGS Inca is going to react to this. Avello poking forward and how is OGS Inca going to react? Moving a Sentry forward. Of course, Sentries are so powerful in this map because basically a force field, one force field right there can halt the advancement of the Terran army for quite a bit. Unless they scan or siege up a tank. It looks like... Inca's gonna lose a free center here. Nope, gonna throw down three force fields. A little bit misplaced though. And gonna lose two stalkers as well. So OJS Inca in a little bit of trouble here. He does have three Amoros, plenty of zealots, and two sentries. It'll all come down to those force fields. But this is what I was afraid of, ladies and gentlemen. Avilo is gonna have an awesome position on this high ground. Look how far these siege tanks can reach. And quite frankly, Inca can't even see what's going on up there. So, yeah, not a. Not the best situation for Inca, but he's going to come forward with his Immortals, putting down the Guardian Shields. Will it be enough? There are a lot of Marines here, a lot of Blue Flame Hellions trying to target fire as best he can with the Immortals. Is OG as Inca? Will it be enough? A lot of Marines here, though. Avilo is looking really good. Up 96 to 78 supply. Inca throwing down two force fields to try to prevent the advancement of the Terran army. So Inca definitely a little bit on his back foot here. Just going to walk around, perhaps. 
I mean, what else would these units be doing? Avila coming forward with these tanks, sieging up again and advancing to the natural expansion of Inca, and all his army is basically on the other side of the map, so is he just going to sacrifice this expansion? I'm not so sure. Might go for a base trade. This is really interesting play from OJ's Inca, and really nice play from BT Avilo. Keep in mind, BT Avilo is taking an expansion behind this, coming forward with these Hellions. If he can get these probes, that would be huge. These Hellions, oh my gosh, these Hellions are doing so much damage to all these probes from OJS Inca. Those Hellions getting so many kills. I'm looking at Inca to have really quick 46 to 28 harvesters in favor of BT Avilo. And as I said, that OJS Inca coming forward, going for a base trade of anything, going straight up the ramp. Probably going to leave the sentries behind to lay down force fields. And as I say that, Avilo backing up with all of his army wants to defend against this aggression from OJS Inca. But will he get back in time? Oh, just think of doing so much damage to the infrastructure of BT Avilo as we speak, targeting down a reactor with a with an immortal and a good play from uh, OGS Inca, leaving those sentries at the top of the ramp, going to force field every time a unit comes back up, but a little bit of a blunder there. And BT Avilo lifting off all of his units, all of his structures, I should say, and moving away back to his ramp. Not many of these units actually shoot up, so except the sentries, and the sentries aren't going to kill a building anytime soon. And OGS Inca finally loses all of his sentries, but the thing is, VT Avila is forced to pull all of his units back. He's losing a lot of mining time and also losing a lot of supply depots. OGS Inca going to town on all of these supply depots and a refinery. But will it be enough to get him back into this game? He is ahead in supply, 85 to 81, and Avila finally going to come forward and clean this army up. At the same time, Inca coming forward with two Archons, a lot of Zealots, two Sentries, and two Stalkers to try to do some more damage. The natural expansion of BT Villa coming immediately forward, trying to tank some damage with those Archons. Very effective indeed. Zealots coming forward, whittling away at those tanks. Going to force field the ramp again, so Avila's finding himself trapped not only on the bottom of the ramp in this game, but also at the top of the ramp. So really interesting play from BT, uh, from OGS Inca, I should say. Absolutely everywhere on this map, playing extremely well. Because uh, remember how many probes he lost. He was behind at one point in this game, ladies and gentlemen. Again, the unknown is OGS Inca, and VT Avilo is, of course, VT Avilo coming forward with two high Templar. Is OGS Inca not sure what he has in mind with these? Probably wants to storm these SCVs. That would be absolutely huge if he can do that. Oh, OGS Inca storm the SCVs. Okay, he's probably just gonna. He doesn't have storm research yet. Storm is not yet researched, so not really sure what these High Templar are deciding to do here. Wondering where their, the rest of their friends went and gonna retreat and into the safety of the rest of their army. But anyway, back in OGS Inca's base, trying to get that pro production back up, chrono boosting both Nexuses as much as he can, also getting Storm out of that High Templar archives. Actually got charge out of his Twilight Council, so really good for those Zealots. Also has plus one armor. That's a combo I love getting personally. Plus one armor on the Zealots coupled with charge. <laughs> pretty much means your Zelts will not die and can do so much damage with that charge, of course. Let's them get to their opponent faster and hit them even faster than they normally would. Looks like VT Avilo approaching his natural once again has so many blue flame Hellions on the field, but OGS Inca wants to get you. Coming forward with two Archons, two Immortals, plenty of Zealots, and a lot of Templars doing a huge storm onto VT Avilo's entire army, frying away a lot of Hellions, and OGS Inca playing immaculately right now, coming back in a big way in this game, laying down a force field Morphing in some more Archons after finishing up with those Storms and proceeding up the ramp of BT Avila with a lot of Immortal Stalkers, Archons, sent and Sentries. Avila forced to lift off and retreat back into his main expansion, OGS Inca, showing why he is one of the best Korean Protoss players out there. OGS Inca proceeding forward into the main. Look at all these Archons, ladies and gentlemen. Will Avila be able to recover from this? No, he won't. Avila throws down the GG.